16th of October 2023, just continuing the series on the house that's swept clean. <clears throat> so you've let Jesus in by faith, you've accepted Christ, you believe he died for your sins, you've accepted him into your house, and he has taken the center place that you occupy in your own life yourself so you give yourself to jesus and you ask jesus to be lord of your life so that he comes in as king lord god master teacher and so forth and then as we explained before you are then seated in christ in heavenly places of course, the kingdom of heaven has come into you because you let the king in, King Jesus. So you're born again, and he's in your house, and you've submitted your will to his Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Jesus cleans your house, and spiritually you begin again. Your sins are paid for, and you have begun your journey in Christ heavenwards, and you are a baby, a baby Christian. So what do you need? Milk. And of course, Jesus has come into your house to feed you, to give you bread, water, milk. But of course, a newborn baby just has milk. And all the nutrients are in the milk of the mother. So we're talking here naturally, but we're also talking about the metaphor, the allegory, spiritually. Every baby needs a parent, specifically a mother, because the milk comes from the mother. That's how God made human beings, for the mother to nurture the child with milk when the child comes into this world, the child is absolutely helpless, can't speak, can't talk, make noises, yes, and the mother gets to know that little baby intimately and, of course, of course, the mother does her best to bring the child up the best she can. Whether she's a Christian or not, whether she's got any religion or not, God has made mothers to care for children. Of course, God has made fathers to care for children as well. So there's this wonderful creation that God has made Adam and Eve and then the ability to have children but of course to look after those children who arrive in this world absolutely helpless. So such is the state of someone who's born of God. So they're born again. At whatever age, whether they're a child or a, an adult, they have to start from the beginning. And if you are an older person like I was, there's a lot of change to be done when I came to Christ at the age of 33, my life had gone wrong in many ways and therefore I needed a lot of undoing to be done over the last 39 years. And it's continuous, it's progressive, as long as I keep submitting to God, God the Holy Spirit. The refiner's fire. So if you continue the idea of the house, that your life is like a house, and at some point, as an adult, you decided to let Jesus Christ in, he, and you opened the door of your house to Christ, he came in to sort you out on the inside. And if you are an adult, and you are conscious of the process, um it's true he, he came into your living room and then you gave him access all areas and he started to sort your life out like like you would sort a house out if you take over a new house 
you clean it out, you wash it, sanitize it, clean it, get rid of all the rubbish. You might get rid of everything, including the wallpaper, the paint. You bring it right back to the beginning and then you make it, the house, what you want it to be. Well, that's what we've done when we've effectively <coughs> given our house to Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Lord, come in, sort me out. Give me another chance. And you're born again. Jesus, spiritually, is the best father you could ever have. The best parent. The best brother, the best teacher. And how does Jesus sort you out? Well, of course, directly, but indirectly as well. So you typically, if you're born of God, you want to go to a church. Or you are sent to a church or called to go to a church, meaning go to somewhere on a Sunday morning and ask God to help you. And it's very complicated to recommend any particular church for any particular person these days because churches vary as much as anything in this world. Different styles of church uh, worship, and, I, and I'm talking about music, different styles of, of uh, meetings, programs, courses. It's very, very complicated when you try to analyze one church, let alone all of them. Let alone, let's say, 50 church groups in Norwich, UK alone. Everyone is slightly different or majorly different. And of course, if you've been following me for a while, I'm talking about the true church is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not real religion. The body of Christ doesn't follow Christianity. The body of Christ is the body of Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, being led by Jesus directly and indirectly through the body of Christ, body ministry. And the ministers are those who are born of God. And I'm not talking about a career Christianity type of ministry where there's a Bible college, there's a clergy system, uh, degrees of theology, divinity, uh, uh, philosophy, uh, methods of counselling, Rogerian, Freudian. We're talking about we talk about the body of Christ as a unique group of people, very much a disparate group of people. One, quote, thing in common, Jesus Christ. The real Jesus, the real saviour, the real master, the real teacher. So each one of us in the body of Christ, we are like a house full of the Holy Spirit. The occupier is the Holy Spirit which is to say Christ, which is to say God the Father, because God is one. So when you let God in, you let God in. And the Spirit of God comes in. Jesus knocks on the door, you let Jesus in. And if you've let Jesus in, you've let the Father in. Now, I'm not talking about three gods. I'm talking about God in every aspect of who God is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, of course. God is the uncreated creator, of course. God is the holy God of the Jews, of course. Yahweh, the holy name of God. So, as a born again believer in Christ, a person becomes a disciple of Christ, a servant of God. But of course, there's a growing up process. It takes time to grow from a baby into a toddler, into a preteen, into a teenager, and then into a mature adult disciple of Christ. 
It takes time. Days, months, years. So I've been on the journey heavenwards for 39 years, times 365, 10,000 days, changing. And like any child in the natural, there can be growth spurts when suddenly the child grows up. Suddenly the child is not a baby. Suddenly the child's a teenager. And where have those years gone? Suddenly the child is growing up before the eyes of the parents. Now let's make something very clear. The, the church is not the parent. And I mean the church in the institutional, denominational sense. The church can never be the parent because the church is not God. The church is not God the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. And of course, the church is not the mother. Now, you might say Jesus said about the disciples being like his mother. Yes, that's right. Disciples. And not everybody who goes to church is a disciple of Christ. We've talked about this for a long time now. Churchgoers go to church for all sorts of reasons, many of whom, those churchgoers, would not call themselves disciples of Christ because they don't know what that means. Many churchgoers are not born of God. They're not born again. They don't know what that means. They are believers. They are churchgoers. They listen, they sing the songs, and they agree with what's being said. But at no stage have they made that commitment to Christ. Have they said to themselves and to others, I need Jesus to be my Lord, my master, my teacher. I need him to be my king. I need Jesus to manage my life better than I have done so far. Well, that's the issue. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Is he number one or not? So we're coming back to the house. So it's very hard for us to understand that uh, we're not a house, we're people. <clears throat> but imagine, now this is just imagination. Imagine there was a baby in the house and the baby was crying and Jesus comes in to help the baby and Jesus comes in and feeds the, the baby and uh, brings the baby up <clears throat> and all the baby knows is Jesus as the parent. And, and of course we know Jesus was a physical human being <clears throat> but he wasn't a woman. So we're talking about a figure of speech here the baby is brought up and fed and watered by the parent. And all the baby knows is that parent has kept the baby alive. Well, God is my parent. He's my father. Yes, the disciples act like a mother to me. And if they have the gift of prophecy, they can prophesy to me what is right for me to know. And it might be a, a revelation, it might be something I, I don't know. Let's say it's something I'm eating which is not good for me, and somebody says to me indirectly, that's not good for you to eat that. That's got too much fat, salt, sugar, whatever. <clears throat> and I might not like being told not to eat certain things. But I need to be told what's good for me as a child. Now, again, if you go back to the natural child of today, born into any family of the modern 21st century, they grow up, whether they're Christian or not, they grow up, they grow up with the pressures of this world to eat what this world offers. And let's just talk about the West. Fast food pot noodles, and as an ex-marketing man, I know now 
we were just selling salt, sugar, fat, and alcohol, which is sugar turned into alcohol. Products at their basic uh, chemical formula, that's where the addiction is. People are addicted to sugar, addicted to salt, addicted to fats, addicted to alcohol, addicted to chocolate. Salt and sugar, formulas of, of chemicals in the food. Uh, bubbles, CO2 in bubbly, bubbly drinks, soda, Coke, Pepsi, sugary drinks. And we are feeding our children from the cradle, formula, packets of children's food, just add water, just add milk. So we're feeding our children on the food that they become addicted to, reliant on, and of course the food becomes comfort food. Comfort food, comfort drink, and again we're talking about addictions. Medication can become a, an addiction, and people are addicted to um, medication, which is just chemistry, chemicals. So if you've asked Jesus, God, to be your God, big G, Lord of your life, big L, he is the master teacher, Lord, and the Holy Spirit is occupying your house to guide you into all truth about life. And this is the 21st century. But everything the Bible, in principle, applies to today. Obviously, the culture is different in the UK to the Israel culture of Christ's day. But the principles are the same. Our real life is spiritual, more than soulish, and obviously more than flesh. And, and Jesus is guiding us, teaching us, bringing us up. And the point is, he's telling us what's good for us, what's not good for us. And the Holy Spirit's been given with the spirit of prophecy to receive words from God directly into your mind, into your conscience, thoughts that come to you from God of how to live your life better than you've ever lived your life before. And whether you've been saved 10 years, 50 years, whatever, you can still learn what God is telling you today for yourself and for others around you in your life in Christ where you are. So the house must be swept clean. But you must open your door to Christ. You must let him in. And when he comes in, his intentions are to clean you out, to restore you, to renew you, to bring you back to what he wanted you to be. Because we are made in God's image. And, and he wants us to be clean, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, to be spotless, blameless, ready for his coming. And Jesus is coming as the bridegroom and the church, the body of Christ, is meant to be the bride holy, set apart, clean, spotless, blameless before God because Jesus took the blame. Jesus died to set us free from the sins. So when you know Jesus has told you your sins are forgiven, you know you are called to go and sin no more. Remain in Christ and he'll remain in you. Jesus is in your house. He is the ultimate best parent, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and he will tell you what's right for you and what's wrong for you. No matter what age you are physically, God wants you to be mature and put away your childishness now and allow yourself to grow up as a teenager, Christian, disciple, 
and then as an adult child of God the Father in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. So that's an overview which is about this teaching from the Bible, from what Jesus said about the strong man cleansing the house, uh, getting rid of the lodgers in the house so that the baby can grow up to be a child of God and then an adult child of God. And remember, we are all children of God, so the church is not your parent. The church itself is an organisation, an institution so nobody's your father except God the Father. Nobody's Jesus, nobody's the Holy Spirit except God himself. We are children of God, disciples of Christ, servants to God's will, to do God's will and to encourage each other in the faith as each one of, of us is making progress towards heaven. So you who are mature in Christ we, including myself, have to be very, very, very gentle with the babies, very kind, very patient with all, and live at peace with all as much as that is possible for you. Avoiding quarrels, avoiding arguments, avoiding people who wind people up just for the sheer, quotes hell of it. And that's a spirit of mischief that comes on certain people who go to church, in quotes, go to church in the wrong spirit, for the wrong reasons. And they need deliverance. They need their strong men binding, and they need their house clean and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. So stop provoking each other to anger, live at peace with one another, Loving, accepting, forgiving each other, as Christ has forgiven you. Now that's a word for all of us. In Norwich, UK, or wherever you are, God is sorting his church out. God is cleansing us by the blood of the Lamb, by the work of the Holy Spirit, the refiner's fire, 1 Peter 1. Let's leave it there. God bless you, brethren of one God. Uh, I'm with Trevor in the morning, God willing, so pray ahead of that and stay in touch. God bless.